Bing Crosby is not only famous as America's most beloved entertainer, but is also known for many negative rumors surrounding his family and career. As a person possessing unusual musical talent, Bing unintentionally created great pressure on his family because they were always tormented to death by his famous shadow. Confessing his inability to balance his career demands with his familial duties, Crosby admitted to neglecting his roles as a father and husband, driving a wedge of resentment between him and at least three of his children. Today, Bing Crosby's only daughter confirmed the rumors surrounding his life. Let's explore. Mary Crosby, in a poignant revelation, delved into the intricate layers of her father's life, offering a glimpse into the tumultuous journey of one of America's most iconic crooners, Bing Crosby. During the mid-1920s, Crosby's musical odyssey commenced with The Rhythm Boys, a trio that became a platform for showcasing his burgeoning love for jazz. His performances reverberated with scat-singing prowess and jazz-infused phrasing, captivating audiences, and setting a distinctive tone in the music landscape of the era. As biography recounts, this phase marked the genesis of Crosby's musical evolution, laying the foundation for his eventual ascent to stardom. However, fame came at a cost. By the early 1930s, Crosby found himself ensconced in the limelight, with a legion of imitators emulating his style. The emergence of copycat Crosbys, from Perry Como to Dean Martin, underscored his influence on the music scene. As one musician aptly noted, the era was characterized by singers striving to embody either the high Crosby or the low Crosby persona, a testament to his unparalleled impact. Yet amidst the zenith of his career, fate dealt Crosby a crippling blow. A bout of laryngitis threatened to derail his musical journey. The strain on his vocal cords manifested in the hoarseness evident in his early recordings, signaling the onset of a tumultuous period. Despite medical advice urging rest, Crosby persisted, resorting to excessive drinking as a coping mechanism, exacerbating his condition. The mid-1930s heralded a transformative phase in Crosby's artistic trajectory. His once illustrious voice underwent a metamorphosis, losing its lofty highs and abandoning the scat-style jazz that had defined his earlier repertoire. Instead, he pivoted towards emotive ballads tailored for mass appeal, solidifying his status as the voice of the nation. Yet this transition came at a personal cost, as his burgeoning popularity strained the fabric of his domestic life. The early years of Bing Crosby's illustrious career shimmered with success and intertwined with a love story that would capture the hearts of many. As chronicled by the Los Angeles Times, Crosby's path crossed with Dixie Lee, a luminous starlet already ascending the ranks at Fox Studios in 1929. Their meeting ignited a spark that would blossom into a profound bond, culminating in marriage on September 29, 1930. Lee, enchanted by Crosby's charm, made the poignant decision to bid adieu to her burgeoning career, opting instead to embark on the journey of parenthood alongside her beloved crooner. Their love story found its home in the tranquil expanse of Toluca Lake, Los Angeles where the couple carved out a sanctuary on a sprawling estate spanning four verdant acres. Here, amidst the serene beauty of their surroundings, Crosby and Lee cultivated a life imbued with warmth and familial bliss. However, tragedy cast a shadow over their idyllic haven in 1943. A devastating fire engulfed their cherished home, reducing it to ashes and consuming the precious relics accumulated over 13 years of matrimonial bliss. The New York Times recounted the harrowing ordeal, detailing how the fire erupted during the delicate task of dismantling Christmas decorations, the innocuous act triggering a catastrophic chain reaction. The inferno ravaged the estate, sparing little in its merciless path. Amidst the wreckage, remnants of Crosby's cherished memories lay strewn, his treasured horse racing and golf trophies reduced to charred relics, and his prized collection of musical recordings consumed by the voracious flames. Yet, 
Amidst the desolation, a glimmer of hope emerged, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Among the ruins, Crosby stumbled upon a poignant reminder of his past triumphs, a charred sports shoe from his dressing room, miraculously safeguarding $2,000 of cash race earnings. Cash, the enigmatic Dixie Lee, once a luminary in her own right, found herself entangled in a complex dance with fame, a dance fraught with shadows and echoes of the past. While her husband, Bing Crosby, soared to the pinnacles of success, Dixie's relationship with the spotlight was a labyrinth of emotions, tinged with nuances of discomfort and longing. As elucidated in Bing Crosby, Crooner of the Century, Dixie's retreat from the limelight wasn't merely a strategic maneuver to propel her husband's career forward. It was a retreat born out of an innate unease in the glare of cameras and the scrutiny of audiences. Despite her erstwhile prowess as an entertainer, the stage and screen became realms of disquiet for Dixie, a world where the applause rang hollow and the spotlight cast shadows rather than illuminating her soul. Yet beneath the veneer of her public persona lay a heart yearning for the simple yet profound affirmations of love and affection. Gary Crosby's poignant recollections in his memoir, Going My Own Way, paint a poignant portrait of Dixie's inner struggles. She craved the tender reassurances of endearment, the whispered words of affection that eluded her grasp in her marriage to Bing. Despite his towering presence in the public eye, Bing's expressions of love remained elusive, leaving Dixie adrift in a sea of longing and loneliness. For Bing, the specter of alcohol loomed large, a formidable adversary that threatened to derail his path to redemption. Yet with Dixie by his side, he found the strength to confront his demons, casting aside the shackles of addiction in a testament to the transformative power of love. However, for Dixie, the battle with alcohol was a different narrative, one fraught with despair and desolation. As revealed in the poignant recounting of Mary Crosby, the daughter who bore witness to the tumult within their midst, Dixie's struggle with alcoholism cast a long shadow over their household. The walls of their once happy home echoed with the haunting specter of her affliction as she sought solace in the embrace of the bottle, her descent into the abyss of addiction, leaving a trail of shattered dreams in its wake. In the hushed corridors of their sanctuary, Dixie's battles played out in silent anguish. Her retreat into alcohol, a desperate bid to drown out the echoes of loneliness and longing that reverberated within her soul. The once vibrant woman, who had captivated audiences with her luminous presence, now found herself ensnared in the grip of a merciless addiction, her spirit dimmed by the weight of her affliction. For Bing's children, the scars left by their mother's struggles ran deep, etched into the very fabric of their beings by the searing pain of witnessing her descent into darkness. The sight of Dixie lying prone on the floor, her form a silent testament to the ravages of addiction, seared their souls with a pain that would linger long after the physical wounds had healed. Dixie Lee's struggles with alcoholism left a deep and enduring impact not only on herself but also on her family, particularly her husband, Bing Crosby, and their twin sons, Dennis and Philip Crosby. The ramifications extended beyond mere psychological trauma, as tragically revealed by American masters. Bing Crosby rediscovered. The documentary unearthed a heartbreaking truth. Dennis and Philip were victims of fetal alcohol syndrome, a condition arising from exposure to alcohol during prenatal development. This revelation shed light on the physical toll that Dixie Lee's alcohol abuse exacted on her unborn children. Their condition was evident in their appearance, with distinct physical markers characteristic of fetal alcohol syndrome. Robert Trachtenberg, the director of the documentary, recounted how the twins' appearance prompted concern. Their featurees, particularly their skull and nosy, bore the telltale signs of the syndrome. 
Trachtenberg, recognizing the gravity of the situation, sought expert opinion from specialists at the University of Southern California, USC. Their assessment confirmed his suspicions. Dennis and Philip were indeed textbook cases of fetal alcohol syndrome. The diagnosis underscored the profound impact of Dixie Lee's alcoholism not only on herself, but also on her children, who were innocent victims of her addiction. It highlighted the lack of awareness and understanding surrounding fetal alcohol syndrome at the time, leaving Dixie and Bing ill-equipped to address the challenges their sons faced. Bing Crosby's ascent to A-list status coincided with the formation of his family with Dixie Lee, marking the beginning of a complex and often tumultuous journey for the Crosby household. As Bing's star rose in Hollywood, his demanding career catapulted him into a whirlwind of professional obligations and commitments, often keeping him away from home for extended periods. The strain of Bing's hectic schedule and constant travel weighed heavily on the family dynamic, leaving Dixie Lee to shoulder much of the responsibility for raising their four sons single-handedly. In an interview with Barbara Walters in 1977, Bing candidly acknowledged the challenges of balancing his burgeoning career with his role as a father. He revealed the stark reality of his absence during his children's formative years admitting that his relentless work ethic often kept him preoccupied with film projects, radio shows, and recording sessions, leaving his sons to attend boarding schools. Despite his success and financial stability, Bing harbored deep-seated anxieties about the influence of Hollywood on his children. He was haunted by the specter of celebrity culture, fearing that his sons would be seduced by the trappings of wealth and fame, leading to their moral decay. This fear manifested in Bing's unwavering determination to shield his family from the perceived vices of Hollywood, creating an atmosphere of strict discipline and austerity within the Crosby household. Bing's preoccupation with preserving his children's innocence and integrity inadvertently fueled a sense of alienation and resentment among his sons. Gary Crosby, in particular, recalled his father's staunch aversion to raising Hollywood kids, reflecting Bing's deep-seated apprehension about the corrupting influence of fame and fortune. This fixation on shielding his children from the perils of celebrity life, however well-intentioned, ultimately drove a wedge between Bing and his sons, exacerbating the rifts within the family unit. The discord between Bing's aspirations for his children and the reality of their upbringing underscored the complexities of fame and familial relationships in the spotlight. Despite his best efforts to insulate his sons from the pitfalls of celebrity, Bing's obsession with preserving their innocence inadvertently contributed to their feelings of estrangement and disillusionment. Bing Crosby's journey as a father underwent a notable transformation during his second marriage to Catherine Grant, marking a significant shift in his paternal instincts and priorities. While his first marriage to Dixie Lee was fraught with challenges and absences due to his burgeoning career, his relationship with Catherine ushered in a new chapter characterized by a greater focus on family and fatherhood. Nathaniel Crosby, Bing's youngest son from his marriage to Catherine Grant, offered insight into his father's evolving approach to parenting. He candidly acknowledged that Bing initially struggled to navigate the complexities of fatherhood, particularly during his first marriage. The demands of Bing's career often took precedence, leaving him with limited time and energy to devote to his children from his first family. However, Nathaniel noted a discernible shift in Bing's priorities during his second marriage. With Catherine by his side, Bing appeared to embrace his role as a father with renewed vigor and commitment. Nathaniel recounted how Bing seemed more engaged and present in their lives, suggesting that his career became less of a priority as he entered this new phase of his personal life. The dynamics of Bing's second marriage afforded him the opportunity to immerse himself more fully in the joys and responsibilities of fatherhood. Freed from the relentless demands of Hollywood, Bing was able to savor precious moments with his children.
cherishing the chance to nurture and guide them through life's milestones. The newfound sense of stability and contentment within Bing's second marriage provided a fertile ground for fostering deeper connections with his children. Nathaniel's reflections offer a glimpse into a more intimate and affectionate side of Bing Crosby, one that was perhaps overshadowed by the pressures of fame and fortune earlier in his career. Catherine Crosby, Bing's second wife, reflected on the universal adoration that her husband inspired, describing how everyone in the world was in love with Bing Crosby. Indeed, Bing's widespread appeal transcended boundaries of age, gender, and nationality, endearing him to generations of fans who admired his talent and charisma. However, alongside his image as America's sweetheart, Bing Crosby also faced criticisms of being perceived as an ultra-square pop crooner. Despite his immense popularity, some viewed him as a symbol of mainstream conformity, lacking the edginess or rebelliousness associated with other contemporary artists. Yet, despite any perceived shortcomings in his image, Bing Crosby remained largely untarnished in the eyes of the public. His persona exuded a sense of innocence and sincerity that made him seem immune to scandal or controversy. However, the veneer of perfection surrounding Bing Crosby was shattered in the aftermath of his death in 1977. His eldest son, Gary Crosby, dealt a devastating blow to his father's legacy with the publication of his memoir, Going My Own Way, in 1983. In the book, Gary exposes the darker side of Bing's character, alleging abusive behavior and emotional neglect during his childhood. The revelations in Gary's memoir sent shockwaves through the public consciousness, challenging the idealized image of Bing Crosby as a benevolent patriarch. While some, including Bing's son Philip, questioned the validity and intensity of Gary's claims, the damage to Bing's reputation was irreversible. Gary Crosby's candid portrayal of his tumultuous relationship with his father painted a starkly different picture from the one perpetuated by Bing's public persona. His accounts of fear, bewilderment, and despair cast a shadow over Bing's legacy, forever altering the public's perception of the legendary entertainer. The publication of Gary Crosby's memoir, Going My Own Way, in 1983 marked a seismic shift in the public's perception of Bing Crosby, revealing a darker, more troubled side to the iconic entertainer. However, the impact of Gary's revelations was further compounded by the unexpected support of his brother, Lindsey Crosby, who corroborated the allegations of their father's abusive behavior. Lindsay's decision to align himself with Gary's account was particularly noteworthy given his status as Bing's apparent favorite among his four sons. This unexpected endorsement lent further credence to the accusations leveled against Bing, challenging the carefully curated image of the doting father and family man. The revelation of Bing Crosby's abusive tendencies sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond, tarnishing the legacy of the beloved crooner and shattering the illusions of his adoring fans. For many, it was difficult to reconcile the affable persona presented by Bing in public with the allegations of cruelty and neglect detailed in his son's memoirs. However, amidst the turmoil and controversy, Glimpses of Bing's paternal concern and compassion also emerged. Despite the strained relationship with his sons, Bing made concerted efforts to support Lindsay during his struggles with alcoholism and depression. Recognizing the severity of Lindsay's condition, Bing considered the possibility of placing him in a psychiatric ward, demonstrating a genuine desire to ensure his son's well-being. Mary Crosby reflected on the decades of clean-up that followed her father's passing, alluding to the long and arduous process of reconciling with the legacy of abuse and dysfunction within the Crosby family. The aftermath of Gary's memoir forced Bing's children to confront painful truths about their upbringing, grappling with the emotional scars left by their father's actions. 
Despite Bing's earnest pleas for help, Lindsay struggled to overcome the demons that plagued him, ultimately succumbing to the weight of his own despair. In the aftermath of Bing's passing in 1977, Lindsay's battle with alcoholism and depression persisted unabated. Despite his father's absence, the specter of Bing's legacy loomed large over Lindsay, casting a long shadow of expectation and scrutiny. The burden of living up to the legacy of his famous father, coupled with the challenges of mental illness and addiction, proved to be insurmountable for Lindsay. The news of Lindsay's suicide in December of 1989 sent shockwaves through the Crosby family and beyond, plunging them into a state of profound grief and disbelief. His tragic death served as a poignant reminder of the toll exacted by the pressures of fame and the silent struggles that often remain hidden behind the glitz and glamour of celebrity life. Marilyn Rice, a representative for Gary Crosby, shed light on Lindsay's protracted battle with alcoholism and depression, attributing his struggles to the strain of living under the shadow of his famous father. Lindsay's tragic end underscored the complex interplay of fame, family dynamics, and mental health, highlighting the profound challenges faced by those navigating the tumultuous waters of celebrity culture. For the Crosby family, Lindsay's death marked yet another painful chapter in their ongoing saga of loss and heartbreak. It served as a sobering reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of addressing the underlying issues that contribute to mental illness and addiction. In the wake of Lindsay's passing, the Crosby family was left to grapple with profound questions of legacy, responsibility, and the enduring impact of their patriarch's fame. His death served as a stark reminder of the human cost behind the veneer of celebrity, prompting soul-searching and introspection within the family and beyond. The tragedy that befell Bing Crosby's family with the diagnosis and eventual passing of his wife, Dixie Lee, cast a long shadow of sorrow and isolation over the renowned crooner. Dixie Lee's battle with ovarian cancer, diagnosed at the tender age of 40 in June of 1952, marked the beginning of a harrowing journey marked by loneliness, illness, and ultimately loss. Compounding the anguish of Dixie Lee's terminal diagnosis was Bing's notable absence during her final moments. As revealed by American Masters, Bing Crosby rediscovered Dixie's doctors made the decision to withhold the grim prognosis from her, shielding her from the knowledge of her impending fate. Meanwhile, Bing embarked on a scheduled movie shoot in Paris, opting to prioritize his professional obligations over his wife's deteriorating health. The circumstances surrounding Dixie Lee's passing underscored the profound disconnect within the Crosby family, with Bing's absence serving as a poignant symbol of the emotional distance that had plagued their relationship. As Gary Crosby recounted in an archival interview, the day of Dixie Lee's funeral descended into chaos, marred by a relentless onslaught of photographers and media attention. Amidst the frenzy of paparazzi and public scrutiny, Bing found himself grappling with profound grief and isolation, mourning the loss of his beloved wife in solitude. But paradoxically, Dixie Lee's death served as a catalyst for fleeting moments of unity within the fractured Crosby family. In the aftermath of her passing, the family briefly found solace in their shared sorrow, coming together to mourn the loss of their matriarch and support one another through the depths of grief. Yet, even amidst the collective mourning, Bing remained steadfast in his determination to keep his grief private, shrouding his emotions in a veil of stoicism and solitude. His refusal to publicly acknowledge his pain reflected his deeply ingrained belief in the sanctity of personal grief, a sentiment encapsulated in his poignant declaration. I will never talk about my grief at losing her. I believe grief is the most private emotion a human being can have, and I'm going to keep mine that way, as quoted in Bing Crosby, crooner of the century.
As the tides of popular music shifted and the soundscape of Hollywood evolved, Bing Crosby found himself navigating a changing landscape where younger, more experimental acts began to dominate the cultural zeitgeist. The emergence of artists like the Beatles and Elvis Presley signaled a seismic shift in musical tastes, challenging Crosby's long-standing reign as the preeminent crooner of his era. Elvis Presley, in particular, emerged as a transformative figure in the music industry, heralding the dawn of the rock and roll era with his electrifying performances and undeniable charisma. While Crosby's polished, cookie-cutter image had resonated with audiences for decades, Presley's raw sensuality and rebellious spirit struck a chord with a new generation of listeners, captivating teenage audiences with his magnetic presence. Despite the changing musical landscape, Bing Crosby remained a revered figure among his loyal fan base and peers, revered for his unparalleled contributions to the entertainment industry. However, not everyone held Crosby in such high regard. David Bowie, the iconic rock musician, famously quipped that his participation in a TV Christmas special with Crosby was motivated solely by his mother's admiration for the legendary crooner, highlighting the generation gap between Crosby's polished persona and the edgier sensibilities of contemporary artists. In 1977, the music industry paid tribute to Crosby's illustrious career with a live, televised special commemorating his 50 years in show business. Despite his advancing age, Crosby took to the stage to perform, embodying the grace and elegance that had endeared him to audiences for decades. However, the evening took a dramatic turn when Crosby suffered a terrifying fall, tumbling off the stage and rupturing a disc in his back. The severity of the accident left Crosby incapacitated, unable to stand or walk for over a month. Mary Crosby recalled the harrowing ordeal, reflecting on the miraculous survival of her father in the face of such grave injury. The incident served as a sobering reminder of Crosby's mortality, underscoring the fragility of life even for a titan of the entertainment industry. Gary Crosby's blistering memoir, penned in 1983, pulled back the curtain on the alleged horrors that plagued the Crosby household, offering a harrowing glimpse into the tumultuous upbringing of the Crosby brothers. While some family members, including Bing Crosby's brother Bob and Gary's younger sibling Philip, vehemently denied the accusations, one undeniable truth emerged. The iconic singer grappled with an inability to express his emotions openly. Barbary Walters, in her probing 1977 interview with Bing Crosby, unearthed this facet of the crow owner's persona, highlighting the public's perception of him as a man seemingly incapable of genuine emotional connection. Crosby, in characteristic fashion, dismissed such assessments, attributing his demeanor to being a surface fella. However, corroborating Walter's observations, Crosby's second wife, Catherine, shed light on her late husband's stoic nature, recounting instances where he struggled to display affection even towards his own children. Catherine's efforts to encourage a more affectionate demeanor in Crosby appeared to fall on deaf ears, as evidenced by his steadfast adherence to his reserved demeanor until the very end. Even on the fateful day of his passing in October 1977, Crosby remained true to form. Nathaniel Crosby, his youngest son, vividly recalled his father's final moments on the golf course following a fatal heart attack. In a poignant reflection, Nathaniel recounted how Crosby's parting words lacked the sentimentality one might expect in such a momentous occasion. Instead of expressing love or gratitude, Crosby simply remarked on the quality of the golf game, underscoring his enduring commitment to stoicism and emotional restraint. Bing Crosby's remarkable career as a legendary crooner spanned decades, during which he left an indelible mark on the music industry with an astonishing repertoire of over 1,200 songs. As noted by American Masters, Bing Crosby rediscovered, Crosby's versatility knew no bounds as he effortlessly traversed various genres 
from hymns and spirituals to Hawaiian melodies, Irish ballads, French tunes, light opera, and even rhythm and blues. Yet among his vast catalog, one song stands out above all others, the timeless holiday classic, White Christmas. Originally recorded by Crosby in May 1942, White Christmas captured the hearts of millions worldwide, becoming an instant sensation. According to the Belleville News Democrat, the song's estimated sales soared to an unprecedented 50 million copies globally. Its popularity was further solidified when it earned a coveted spot in the inaugural edition of the Guinness Book of World Records in 1955, securing the title of best-selling single of all time, a distinction it held for decades to come. Despite Crosby's prolific career and diverse musical contributions, some critics have lamented that his legacy has been overshadowed by the overwhelming success of White Christmas. Record producer Ken Barnes succinctly captured this sentiment in American Masters, suggesting that history often reduces Crosby's monumental achievements to his annual rendition of the holiday classic. In a 1977 interview with Barbara Walters, Crosby addressed speculation about his feelings towards White Christmas, dismissing any notion of weariness with the song. On the contrary, he expressed gratitude for its enduring popularity while humbly acknowledging the possibility of listener fatigue. Despite his reservations, Crosby's unwavering affection for the song underscored its enduring significance in his illustrious career. Indeed, White Christmas remains a perennial favorite, serving as a poignant reminder of Crosby's unparalleled talent and enduring legacy. Far from diminishing his contributions to music, the song's timeless appeal serves as a testament to Crosby's enduring influence and ability to captivate audiences across generations. What do you think about Bing Crosby's tragic life as told by his daughter? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.